close to a year in the global pandemic that's upended all of our lives, millions of doses of COVID vaccines are now being rolled out to Americans, as well as to the rest of the world. Earlier this year, I spoke to Dr. David Aronoff, Director of Infectious Diseases at Vanderbilt University, to find out when our lives might return to normal. Once again this week, I sat down with Dr. Aronoff to ask if these new vaccines are the light at the end of the tunnel. Dr. Aronoff, uh, the vaccines have come to the marketplace in record time. Normally these would take five to 20 years. They've been done in less than 10 months. Should people be worried that they were maybe marketed, brought out too fast, or is, is this safe? Yeah, no, people should not be concerned. The, they are very, very safe. In fact, what really sped up bringing these vaccines to market uh, had a lot to do with how focused everyone was invested on getting these to the market. The vaccines went through the usual early small phase one, then larger phase two, and then really large phase three clinical studies to make sure that they created a strong immune response, that they were safe, and that they prevented what they are aiming to prevent, which is COVID-19. Fortunately, because there was really no barrier in terms of people being willing to participate in the trials, willing to conduct the trials, and willing to invest in the development of these vaccines, that really removed a lot of the roadblocks. And in parallel to these clinical studies, the companies like Pfizer and Moderna started manufacturing these vaccines even before the results of the clinical trials were known. And obviously that was a risk, but it was felt to be a very important risk to take given the state of the pandemic. I can remember back in the spring when we were told uh, on the you know news talkers at night, there's no way we'll have a vaccine in less than a year. There's no way it's not possible. And now that we do, uh, it, it is quite a remarkable feat. How much will this impact our ability to get back to normal living? And when might that happen? Well, there's no question the way forward is immunization. This is really the answer we've been looking for. Right now in the United States, just a little over 5% of the population have been diagnosed with COVID-19. And even though that's an underestimate for sure of the number of people who have had COVID-19, the vast majority of people in the United States are still quite vulnerable to infection. And uh, I'm somebody who rounds on our patients in the hospital every day, and I don't want to see another patient struggling to breathe, struggling to live with COVID-19. The way forward is to make sure enough of us have immunity that we can stop this pandemic in its tracks. And that's where right now it's a race against the clock. We need to do the things that we know we can do to protect those around us from getting infected while manufacturers make new stocks of vaccine and some of the other types of vaccines that are on the clinical pipeline continue so that we might have even more choices and more quickly get people immunized. You had mentioned uh, Pfizer and Moderna. I know Johnson & Johnson are very close to the marketplace and their early trials indicated that like the other two, they were in the 90 to 95% efficacy range, which in itself is astonishing. I mean, that is a high number for uh, a vaccine effectiveness, isn't it? It's incredibly high. And I think the, the great uh, reason why these were so successful had a lot to do with the fact that people have been investing in research about viruses like coronaviruses for many, many years. And people knew that the little spiky bits on the outside of the coronavirus are really important for that virus ability to bind to our cells and cause infection. And so the genius move of these mRNA vaccines and other vaccines was to make sure that the recipients of the vaccines could develop a very strong, very targeted immune response against that little spiky bit on the outside of the virus that's crucial for it to stick to our cells and cause infection. We all thought, hoped, that this might be 60, 70% effective at preventing infection. To see the kinds of data we're seeing, not just from one of these vaccines, but from multiple of these vaccines, suggests that we really did hit a home run. Do we know how long immunity would be for the patient who takes the vaccine? Is this a one year, 10 year, lifetime? Do we even know yet? 
It's a little early to know. In fact, the, the longest anyone has been even naturally immune from infection is, is at most about a year. Uh, in the vaccine studies, they date back now for about six or seven months. And we are seeing evidence that several months after getting immunized, people still have very high levels of effective antibodies in their bloodstream. My hope is that this is the kind of immunization that we need to get once in a blue moon. The problem is we just don't know yet. And we also don't know if this virus is going to disappear from the human population after we get enough people immunized, or it's gonna to continue to percolate and bubble and we'll have to periodically get another booster. And maybe that booster would be a nasal spray vaccine. I don't know, um, but I think we're just gonna to have to see how things fall out in the future with that. Well, I know one thing, uh, as soon as it becomes available to, to guys like me, I'm, I'm in line. I'm gonna take it because I have far less fear of the vaccine than I do of COVID, which I have seen even take the lives of some of my dear friends. And it's just not a risk I wanna take. Dr. Aronoff, as always, you bring so much light to the discussion and we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, I want to thank Dr. David Aronoff for joining us and bringing us some much needed clarity. By the way, if you want to keep up with Dr. Aronoff, follow at DM Aronoff on Twitter.